So let's talk about some geometry stuff here. The first thing I'm going to do is click on the little simple brush icon, and I'm going to select a plane 3D. Click and drag, tap the T key, and then turn on polyframe. So uh, at this point, it's just the primitive. So I can come over here and go to initialize. And what I want is just a very simple plane. So I'm going to drop the H divide and V divide values to two, and then come up and hit make poly mesh 3D. So now I have just a single polygon. And if I expand my subtool menu and I mouse over it, what you can see is it says polys equals one. So what we can do here is uh, the, sort of the, the secret power of ZBrush is the ability to divide geometry into polygonal meshes that have many, many millions of polygons and without crashing. So the more polygons you have, the more detail you can get out of that geometry. Obviously this is just a plane, so we're not really getting any detail out of this at all. But uh, I wanna demonstrate something here. So I've got my polyframe on. So if I come over to geometry down here and I click the divide button, you can see the hotkey for uh, subdivide mesh is control D. So I'm gonna press it one time. And if I delete lower for a second, you can see I now actually have four polygons. And the reason that it got circular is I've got this uh, SMT option, which just means it's gonna smooth it uh, every time it divides it. So if I, if I don't want that to happen, I can just turn SMT off and we'll come over and hit divide again. Uh, let's see it. Fortunately, that's not going to show the internal edges unless I delete lower. But as you can see, there we go. We have deleted the, the lower subdivision. So now I have four polygons. So what I'm going to do is rather than deleting lower, I'm going to go up to the subtool icon. We'll mouse over and predictably it says polys four. So now if I hit control D again or divide, you can see now we have three subdivisions. And the geo doesn't look any different, but there's actually some verts that are starting to show up. Uh, there might be an option. I don't think so. Um, yeah, there we go. So you can see now a, a lighter line here. We've got these additional subdivisions. And if I mouse over, I can see now I have 16. And if I hit Control D again, let's see, maybe just turning that off and on. Now we can see we've got even more polygons. So each time I add a subdivision, what I'm doing is I'm taking every single polygon and converting it into four polygons. So within just a few subdivisions, let's go ahead and do one more. We can mouse over, we should have 256. And then if we do one more subdivision, we'll be at a thousand polygons. So within six subdivisions, we've gone from a single polygon plane to something that now has 1,024 polygons. So if I come over and delete lower, we can see that's how many polygons we actually have over, uh, uh, over just six subdivisions. So if I were to hit Control D again to add another subdivision, now I'm, I'm basically adding what would be the seventh. Uh, we're going to be at 4096 and one more. And now we're at 16,000 and one more, uh, so on and so forth, right? So, so with uh, just a few subdivisions were at 16,000. Let me see, we'll add a couple more here. And a quarter million and another subdivision were at a million polygons. So uh, from a single plane to a million polygons, I think it would probably be about 12 subdivisions. You will almost never end up going that high, uh, typically because you're not starting with a single plane, you're starting with something that already has a decent amount of geometry. But here's the difference between a plane that has a thousand polygons if I come over to my standard brush, we'll get into the brushes here in just a moment, and I do a little bit of a stroke, you can see those polygons are very visually obvious. There just aren't that many polygons to describe what's happening with the stroke. But if I go up to the, all the way to a million polygons, you can see it's much, much smoother because we're getting a far denser mesh to describe that stroke. And in fact, you can't even see the polygons. Uh, if I move the camera, it's going to drop the, the subdivisions down a little bit so that it can render it more quickly. But as soon as I, I let go, it's going to go ahead and render the, the full poly count here, which is, which is going to be lovely. So the, the punchline of this is you can work uh, at a fine detail level with a lot of polygons at some high subdivision level. And then if you want to make like a larger change to the geometry, you can drop it down and make that change. 
And then whatever you have done at that lower subdivision, when you go back up to the top, it will be smoothly applied, or at least ideally it will be smoothly applied to the higher uh, subdivisions. And it may be because I've got smooth turned off that it's kind of re re remembering that artifacting. But the ability to have multiple subdivisions in a single subtool here is kind of where the power of ZBrush comes from because you can you can really do some very finely detailed work at the top. And then if you need to make larger changes, you can do that down at the bottom. Okay, so that's subdivisions. You wanna be careful with subdivisions that you don't go too high. It's easy to just sort of smash this button uh, or hit Control D until your mesh is very, very smooth, but you may be you know, dealing with 10 million polygons and you don't actually need that many polygons because that, that's just way more detail. And the, the downside is ZBrush is gonna save pretty regularly. And the more geometry you have, the longer it takes to save and potentially the less stable it becomes. So you kind of want to just like find the specific number of poly polygons and the specific subdivision that gives you the detail that you need without going uh, too far above that. So, okay, let's, uh, we're going to walk back here. This is also, I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but this is the undo slider. So if you want, you can just kind of drag it back and it's pretty quick. So I am going to go up to the top subdivision. So now what I've, I've got is a plane with uh, about a, a million polygons. And you should have something that's kind of similar to this if for some reason you have been uh, watching and not following, which is totally fine. We'll just go ahead and make a new one. So you can see if I, if I mouse over this plane 3D, the polygons by default start at 1024. So that's what that looks like. And when I selected it up here, we actually switch it over. They're in the exact same spot, so there wasn't a visual difference. But you can see when I grab the plane 3D, I'm looking at the primitive version of the geometry uh, submenu, and when I click on the poly mesh 3D, I get the, the full thing with all those subdivisions that we just added. So I'm going to grab plane 3D, and we'll just uh, make this a poly mesh 3D. So now we're sort of starting from scratch, and I'm going to add just a few subdivisions. We'll just hit Control D maybe three times. So now our poly count is 16,000. Let's bump it up a little bit more. 65K should be fine. So the the standard brush here is a good one to start with. And the way that I'm adjusting the size is with the S key. So you can also come up here if you prefer. That has been exposed. But I change my brush size all the time. So I use the S key. And what this looks like is kind of your, your classic Bugs Bunny under the ground thing, right? It's uh, pretty straightforward. Getting a little stippling here. Let me, this might be my lazy step. So yeah, that's gonna be a little bit of a smoother stroke. So by default, it's gonna be set to Z add. That means it's going to move the geometry above the surface. You can either hold Alt which will make it a negative stroke, or you can switch it up here to Z sub. I recommend uh, just holding Alt because the you'll get used to whichever the, the default behavior is and you'll kind of want to be able to adjust it on the fly just with a simple keystroke. So that's the standard brush. You can also notice that there's uh, two circles here. On the outside of the circle is where the brush has zero influence and on the, uh, the interior circle is where the brush has 100% influence. Uh, we're doing a quick save here, I think. So if I want to modify that, that's called the focal shift. Let me just hit Control Z a couple times. Here's where the focal shift lives. You can soften the brush by reducing where the uh, the brush has 100% influence, or you can make it a little bit more. Uh, well, in this case, it's looking kind of funky, but there are some brushes where, where especially when you, you start adding uh, alphas, which is a, a filtering process that we'll talk about in the next video, where it uh, the focal shift can actually have a very positive impact on how the brush looks. So that's brush size, and whether or not we're going up or down, and also focal shift. So right before the video ends, there's one more thing that I want to talk about, which is going to be Z intensity. So a lot of brushes are going to have a default Z intensity that may not necessarily be what you're looking for. You can easily adjust it here. The Z intensity is just how much displacement we're getting per stroke. So that's a Z intensity of 16. That's going to be a Z intensity of 58. And I'm pressing pretty hard. And then that's going to be a Z intensity of 93. So you can see, you can moderate the... Uh, 
uh, the, the amount of displacement on the geometry with Z intensity. So that's, uh, that's going to be most of what we need to learn about the brush stroke stuff. And each brush is going to have its own sort of specific behaviors. Uh, and there are actually millions and millions of them. You're not going to have, not literally millions, but um, you will probably not have as many of these. I have some special brushes that I've added along the way. But in the next video, we'll talk about some of these other brushes here and uh, should be useful for getting us going uh, for sculpting in general.